Cadets, and uh, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about music production at ISM. And ever since I was little, I've really always uh, loved the arts, and more recently I've gotten more into music, and as I've uh, explored and discovered music, I found music production as the perfect avenue for me as you can kind of be in control of everything, and it's just the best way to do everything all at once, which I like. So. What I'll be talking about, I'll start off with a little bit about the class and what it's like and assignments we do. And then I'll follow that up with telling you a little bit about my mentor and then my visits with my mentor. And then I'll go into my product development and the product is a very uh, big thing in ISM and something that I work very hard on. And then finally, I'll end with the conclusion and wrap everything up. So what is ISM exactly? ISM is an acronym for Independent Study Mentorship. The independent means you can choose your topic, like no matter how, oops, no matter how niche it is. Uh, I know somebody that does voice acting, and I also know somebody that does something a little bit more general, like orthopedic surgery. So you can choose anything you want as long as you can find a mentor. It also teaches a lot of life skills, something that ISM helped me a lot out, uh, helped me a lot with is procrastination and just time management. And even though I'm not the best at that still, it really uh, got me to a much better place and I'm getting my work in uh, a lot better. So ISM doesn't just help with that, but it's taught me a lot of other various skills. Study means you're able to learn firsthand behind a professional. Uh, whatever topic you choose, you find a mentor in that field and then you're able to learn uh, right behind them and you can study what they do in their workplace and things like that, what they, how they feel about their job and just different aspects of their job. We also do a lot of research projects and one of my favorite that we did through, through the year was an annotated bibliography. We've done multiple through the year, but my favorite was on the ethics of our field and the thing that I chose to do the ethics on was sampling, which is a very controversial thing in music as if you don't sample correctly, you can get in a lot of money trouble and get a really, uh, really expensive lawsuit on your hands if you're not able to sample correctly, which I'll actually get into later. And then finally, mentorship means you're able to, like I said, get a first-hand look behind your mentor and just learn things about their job and also how they work in their job specifically. And you're also able to build connections, not just with your mentor, but also through your mentor and meet a lot of the people that they work with. And yeah. So I have a paper on all y'all's desks. And uh, as I said, sampling, I'm gonna teach y'all a little bit about how to sample correctly. So right here, the diagram on the left shows something called transposing. And transposing essentially is taking a note, as you see there, and then just moving it down or up one octave. And that way you are able to take the note or chord, but it won't be exactly the same and you won't get uh, a lawsuit because of it. So all, on, on all your papers, the top picture is the picture right here. And these are the original two chords. And just take a look at those. And there's two answer choices. So I'll give you a listen to answer choice A. I might have to click it. Wait. So this is the original chord right here. You can get a listen to it, get an idea of it in your mind. So there's the original chord, the top one. And then answer choice A, right here. And then answer choice B. give you all about 30 seconds to answer that. Does anybody need to listen to them again? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And if you uh, don't have the best ear, you can also try to look at what exact keys are playing on the left there.
what is transposed, so it should just be moved down. You come. I do good. So does everybody have their answer choices? Yes. All right, so uh, raise your hand if you were answer choice A. And raise your hand if you were chose answer choice B. Okay, everybody raising their hand is wrong. It's answer <laughs> choice A. <laughs> so if you did choose answer choice A, you're one step closer to uh, being a music producer. <laughs> So getting into my mentor, who is Tommy Martinez, or he just goes by Tommy. He's a producer, singer, songwriter, meaning he works with a lot of different people and he also makes solo music on his own. He is currently signed with Auditory Research Record Label and he has an education from UTSA and Northwest Vista and he's learned uh, audit, uh, audio engineering as well as economics. And he, he says that economics still helps him as a big part of music production is finding a good price and working with people and getting the right amount of money that you feel you and your music are worth. So going into my mentor visits, right there, you can see uh, from these two pictures here, we're, we only meet virtual, which uh, a lot of ISM students are able to actually go and meet their mentor in person. And I would say that with my field, meeting virtual isn't exactly the worst, and uh, I still am able to learn just as much. So how our meetings go most of the time is we start off talking, he tells me about what he's done throughout the week as he's a very busy person and he works with a lot of different people and he's constantly working on music so he tells me a little bit about what he's done throughout the week and since we haven't talked. And then I go into asking questions that I've thought of like just, they don't have to necessarily be music questions but like what his favorite part about his job was or what his favorite thing that he did in the past week was or even what was his least favorite job what what's his least favorite part of the job or what's the thing that aggravated aggravated him the most this week and then finally more recently as we've been making the product we've made music and making music is the best part so one of my favorite mentor meetings personally was our first one making the product and Obviously, as a music a person following a music producer, it's pretty obvious what I would make as my product. So as we were making the song here, uh, this was the first meeting making it, and I thought that we could hop into a meeting, lay down the keys, lay down the drums, lay down some guitar, and boom, we'd already be halfway towards the song. And I was, uh, my dreams were shortly crushed as our first meeting, we got about five seconds of song down and it was a very tedious thing as the style that I wanted to go for had very specific rules. And we start off with the keys, as you can see here, as Tommy th uh, thinks that's the best way and that's the technique he uses is starting off with the keys. So we, it took about an hour to an hour 30 minutes just making five seconds of song. So don't, uh, that just goes to show that music production isn't as easy as you might think and it can be very tedious, but we ended up having a uh, some keys down that I was actually very happy with. So into the best part, which is gonna be a majority of my uh, presentation here, is the product development uh, or the product. And in ISM, a product is needed, like I said, and every kid has to make a product, whether it's something that helps their mentor or helps in their field and as a music producer, it's pretty obvious, like I said, what I would make. So I made a song, and you can see here, my original ideas, brainstorming. And I was trying to think of the best way that I could just display the various amounts of tools and skills that I've learned throughout the year. And I thought the best way was kind of make a jazz style song as that use many different instruments. And uh, there's a lot, uh, a lot of notes going on at the same time. And it's not exactly repetitive and stagnant like a lot of other genres. So I plan to make a jazz song and kind of a progressive song and add in just as much as I possibly could. And I think that creating this brainstorming sheet was actually very helpful as when you're creating a song, you don't exactly just want to jump in and you kind of have, want to have a plan and some inspiration beforehand. So here's my timeline and I'll shortly play you guys what each, each instrument sounds like, but at the 25%, that's kind of where we just got down the basics of the song and the base of the song. 
So like I said earlier, we laid down the keys first as that's normally what Tommy does. And then we hopped into the drum shortly after and Tommy, he's a very big drum guy. And for some reason, instead of using his drum expertise, I made my own and just told him to pick which ones I should use. And after that, we went into the bass and then we followed that up with a pad, which I actually, actually ended up cutting out of the song because I didn't really like it. So I'll play you guys each element here. So here are the keys. And after having those basic chords down, it was kind of easy to build off of it. Uh, versus if you start off with drums, it's kind of harder to build off drums as the drums on many songs can be very similar. So once I had the keys down, I went into the drums as you can hear here. the basics down in the 50% we kind of wanted to expand off of that so as you can see here in the first picture it's just four basic elements and then on this picture it's the same four basic elements but I kind of wanted to add a melody or something going throughout the song so I, I made a what was originally a bell and I made this kind of loop right here and then I split it into there so it would kind of lead into it and I'll show you guys here and like I said, it was a bell before, but I ended uh, switching into a glockenspiel, as you can hear right here. So obviously all those four things, they kind of sound a little weird, maybe a little incomplete, but once I show you guys the final, it'll make more sense. So then after that, we hop into the 75%, which is my favorite part as once you have basically all the basics down and also as, as well you have down the melody, you can fill in those gaps where there's nothing really going on. So as you heard earlier, the keys were very long long chords and then same with the bass it wasn't it wasn't constantly making sound all the time so what you want to do at this section is kind of just fill in those blank spots where there's nothing going on and especially with the jazz song you want it to be active and you don't want any downtime where it's kind of just uh, low low playing chords or low playing notes and you want it to just be something new happening all the time so as you can see i'll go back to the last slide there's only a couple elements here, and then in the 75% part, oops, I have added a lot more and a lot more depth into the song. So one thing that I added was on top of the glockenspiel that I showed you earlier, and it's the strings, which are playing the same notes, but just a different instrument to add more. <laughs> the strings I added a bit of acoustic piano to kind of differentiate two parts of the song as as you can see in the front half we have those same chords that I showed you earlier and just to add more flavor and more uh, just new things happening I kind of split it into two right here and made the second half acoustic piano that way it wasn't just 
digital electric piano playing and that way I could just add some more spice to the song. So here's what the acoustic piano sounds like. So, just before I show you guys the final product, I want to get into some dilemmas and some issues that I had creating a song as it's not all just uh, sunshine and rainbows and it's not super easy and there are a lot of problems that you run into as with any art. So one of the main problems I ran into was writer's block and if you've ever written an essay or if you've just taken an English class before, you know what writer's block is. It's when you're trying to create something and you kind of just hit a point where your mind just goes blank and you can't think of anything new. And that's usually for me an, indica an indication of some a time that when I need to stop and just kind of let, let my mind kind of refresh so that I'm not putting out stuff that isn't my best work. So writer's block was a really big thing that I had to deal with through creating the song. And it's a real serious issue with any art, honestly. And then the second thing that I ran into a lot was repetitiveness. As with any music, uh, music topic or music avenue, you have to listen to the same things over and over again. And especially with music production, you have to listen to the same, the same chords, the same drums, just over and over until you think of an idea that works with it. And with that, with hearing the same thing over and over, it can become very annoying and it can kind of just start sounding very uh, just repetitive. And at that point, it's just it just becomes something that it got to a point where I was like, is this my best work? Like, is this, does it even sound good just because I'm hearing it over and over again? So repetitiveness is a real uh, big issue that I had to deal with throughout the creation of the song. And like I said, that goes with anything in music. And especially, like I said earlier, how you wanna kind of fill in those gaps with where there's nothing going on. You have to play, you have to play that section where you wanna fill in. So just hearing the same five seconds over and over, it can become really annoying, but that's also a big issue I had to deal with and I did overcome eventually. And then the third thing I ran into was uh, something a little bit more internal and something with me specifically is that I'm a big perfectionist when it comes to the art I make. So when I was creating this song, I wanted everything to be perfect and exactly how I thought of it in my mind. And that can obviously be a problem when uh, you have a limited time that you can make the music and I have a strict deadline since it's a class that I'm taking. And being a perfectionist is something that is very hard to deal with as, especially as a beginner, as you can't always reach exact the exact sound you want as you don't even know how to do that. So being a perfectionist, it was really difficult as I kind of had to not settle in a way, but kind of change the idea that I initially had and kind of resort to something that I knew how to do or that I was taught to do from Tommy. So uh, the best part right here is my 100% product. As you can see in the top left is a mixing board. What a mixing board essentially is, is you change all the levels of the different elements and change the volume and change what can be heard and also add different effects on top of the, on top of the song. So that's something that can be very tedious again like I said last time, or last slide, was the repetitiveness, and you will have to listen to the same thing over and over and change the values over and over until you get the perfect sound that you want. So in the uh, bottom left right there is what my 100% looks like. It's also on that computer over there, and I'll show you guys a video shortly. And as you can see, comparing it to the first picture that I showed you of the song, it's very looks a lot more complex, and there's way more stuff going on. As you can see here is the effects that I added throughout the, song, uh, throughout the song, the automation effects right here. And basically between the 75% and 100%, we were just kind of polishing up the song. And through that, I did add a couple more things, which I'll show you shortly. Uh, as we have here, uh, the right, I went to my, uh, my friend Jacob's studio where he records music in. And I originally had just went there as there, uh, me and my friend Mateo wanted to record a trombone on it, 
but we didn't have the best equipment and it wasn't it wasn't sounding that good but when we did show up Jacob wanted to add his own uh, guitar onto it and as a rock person I thought that maybe the styles would kind of clash as I was going for a more jazz and just uh, a little bit more like slow song but he did add a, he did add some guitar on it which had a little bit of rock in, in it but as you know, we uh, kind of decided and settled on the exact sound that we wanted. So it was a lot of talking and it was a lot of fun actually getting to be inside uh, a, getting to be inside somewhere like that where we could just bounce ideas off of each other and get to a point where we all thought it sounded good and I thought that it was what I was hearing in my head. And then on the bottom right there, like I mentioned earlier, is my friend Mateo who recorded trombone uh, and you'll hear it at the end. So I have the colors there to show you and a video up here to show you what the uh, song is like. So if you wanna follow with the instruments, the colors are there. So if you wanna hear the drums, for example, just look for all the orange bars and I'll play you guys what my 100% final product sounds like.
yeah, making that song was a lot of fun, especially since it was uh, really, I, I have been making music for a while, but it was my first song where I had real, real professional input through my mentor and was able to fully complete it 100%, mix it, master it and everything. And I obviously didn't do it myself as I had a lot of help from a lot of different creative people. But for the most part, I it's almost all me as I'm uh, setting the values on everything and just changing it to sound exactly uh, what, it, what I envisioned for the song. And it was a lot of fun uh, just working with a lot of different people. And it's kind of a look uh, ahead of what I will be hopefully doing after high school and after college. Oh. <laughs> so, sadly, my mentor couldn't make it here as he lives in Arizona. But, uh, wait, who's recording? Are you recording? <laughs> I'm going to send this to Tommy. So, thank you, Tommy, a lot for helping me throughout this year. It was a lot of fun uh, just getting an inside scoop of what me, uh, music and music production is like. And really, I couldn't have uh, made this song or done anything uh, this year without you. So I just want to say thank you. And you have a gift uh, coming in the mail, hopefully soon. So. <laughs> and uh, just to wrap everything up, hopefully you guys learned a little bit about the class and what I've done throughout the class, like make that song and just learn a lot of different things about music and music production. And I think that ISM is really, really helpful for me as with music, it's something that isn't as clear cut as other jobs in other businesses. And you kind of want to get, it's always great to get a head start in music and kind of learn before you, get to, uh, before you get to college and before you step into the field after college. So ISM was just a great opportunity for me to uh, just feel more confident that I was ready to take that next step. And I am gonna be taking it next year and hopefully I can learn even more and add on to what I've learned this year. So I just wanna thank every, everybody for uh, being able to make it here and taking your time. I also wanna thank Mateo and Jacob for helping out with the song and Tommy of course for helping me out and just uh, kind of telling me uh, so much and just allowing me to learn under him and not telling me exactly what to do, but just giving me some tools to work with and seeing what I do with them. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy my presentation and hopefully you guys learned a thing or two, so thank you. <laughs>